Hello, I'm Craig Constantine. Hi, Craig. I'm Simon Ratcliffe. Welcome to the show. Thank you for taking the time, as I say to everybody, because as I always say, I really mean it. We had a little conversation beforehand, which actually I had forgotten how far back. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Where did I mean it? Like, we go all the way back to the first podcasting course that I took. You were in the course. And I'm like, you know, part of what I love about this particular show is getting to catch up with people that I haven't talked to in like, ooh, that's like two years now, maybe coming up on three years. So I, there's so many things that like you and I could, we could just, sometimes I think we should just randomly talk with no intention of being mindful of the time, but let's, let's try and have a thread to start. So I do a little free association and you started talking about, you, you wound up talking about joy and enthusiasm and you kind of started talking about something else. And I'm, I'm purposely like trying to cover over some of the things. And we wound up talking about what I said is this is like a podcaster pod roller coaster, like the pod coaster. There's this, your words, there's this thing of like my enthusiasm goes up as I'm recording and then editing. And some people would say it already starts going down when editing, but okay, you're still going up in editing. And then we both kind of laughed as it's like, yeah, you push publish. And then it's like, nah, it's all because <laughs> yeah, it's so hard to get any traction. It's so hard to get um, feedback. And I'm just wondering, what do you do? Like, like how aware are you of that, the downhill? Like as you're going up the uphill, are you like trying to plan ahead or you're just like, no, I'm just enjoying the ride up the hill? That's a good question, Craig. I mean, I think, as I said when we were talking before, that, that there is a real joy in actually recording the podcast because that's the raw state with which you are talking to your guests. In my case, I interview guests. So you really get to understand somebody's story. I mean, obviously my podcast is, you know, does delve into people's lives in a, in a fairly, fairly deep way. And it, it never ceases to amaze me how open and honest people can be about their lives and often very, very emotional subjects. Um, mm. In fact, some of my guests say, this is like having a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Only the great news is I haven't had to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yes. I, I guess that's that's where I get my joy. And and I the, the other parts are really the mechanics of getting it out there, which I find less exciting. I quite enjoy the editing purely because you're going back to that conversation, going mm. back to remembering exactly that conversation and, and, and uh, you know, some of the, the meaning behind it. So that, that's really my, that's my roller coaster. Mm. Do you do anything else? Um, I, I love that you mentioned like going back to the conversation, like as a personal opportunity to revisit. And there are some things that I do, like uh, I'm scribbling frantically trying to take notes because I actually keep notes about the individual conversations that I have. And I, I try to revisit them and I'm working on writing articles. And I really, I really think for me, and the question is, is it also the same for you? That there's a lot of value in when I'm in the conversation, I'm only really honestly partly there. No insult intended, Simon. Like part of me is always trying to watch the time and be aware of all the meta stuff. So when I go back, it's like, not only is it great to revisit, but I'm actually experiencing it for the first time, even though I was supposedly there the first time. And I'm wondering, do you do anything else with your pieces? Like, you know, do you like listen to them randomly later down the road or do you try to write about them or like, how does that whole self feeding self improvement process look for you? Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I, d I don't do anything back on them and, and that's an interesting thought I haven't done a thing with really I guess I do feel very present in my interviews and I think I have to because when you're talking about the subject matter I'm talking about which is people who've gone through some kind of adversities are often delving into you know their childhood lots of parts of different aspects of their life I really need to be present because mm. you really need to lead the story and you need to dig into the right things at the right time in order that the listener gets the full understanding of, of the, of the story. Um, and I suppose I, I, I guess 
partly my historical career has helped me in that because I was in the advertising business and then I went on and set up a, a brand consultancy. And part of that was doing research. So I have done thousands of group discussions with ordinary people up and down the country. And that's paid for by a client. And you have to deliver a great a great mm-hmm. outcome for that. So that is really going way beyond the superficial. You have to really get deep into an understanding of why people say the things they say. So I guess thinking back, that's probably equipped me to do it in the way that I'm able to, because I've had that kind of, it's almost like my mm. instinct is to Has dig deeper. It strikes me that there's there's almost three, <clears throat> I mean, we've got like three different things here, or, or three different types of the same thing. Um, so what I'm doing in, in this conversation with you, not to get overly meta about it, is I'm aware that I'm not going to edit this. Like, I mean, I'm going to mix the sound levels, but I'm not going to do any cutting. And we have like a, is that okay at the end? And we have like a, you know, should we veto or not? But other than that, mm-hmm. we know this is going out as is. So that, oh, let me just name the three types. So that's one type. And the other type, and I also do some, like you're describing where you do a long conversation with someone and then they're edited in post-production and you try to like really make a good thing out of it, tell a story with what you captured. Um, so if what we're doing today is short form and we call that long form, my brain exploded when you started talking about doing conversations with groups of people because you're doing it live and you're concerned about the experience, the experience, the, the experiential thing that you're creating in real time. And I'm wondering if you've, first of all, if you've ever thought about, I don't know if you've ever done short form stuff like this, but in those two long forms that you've done, have you ever sat down and thought about the different thought processes and like short term, you know, seconds, minutes, hour long targets that you have to maintain in those different formats. Because in this 20 minute format, it's like, if I don't say it, it didn't happen. And if I do say it, I can't get it out later versus that's kind of similar to being in a live room. Have you ever really taken that stuff apart and thought about how those different formats affect what you have to do in the moment? That's a really, really good point. I mean, I, I, I guess I'm lucky in that, you know, my, my podcast, I will record it for as broadly speaking for as long as needed. And that generally ends up being an hour to an hour and a half. So, you know, I have a fair bit of fair right. bit of editing to do after that. And in the research, it's ironic. You have about the same time. It's about an hour and a half to two hours, but you're faced with about eight different people. So, so clearly there's, you know, there's less, less time for everybody to speak, but that's a re- really good question. Um, and I think the other thing that perhaps makes it slightly easier for me is that because I'm not as tech- technically minded as someone like you, Craig, in terms of you know, all the aspects of podcasting, recording, everything, it enters my mind much less. Mm, so almost point. I'm not thinking about that. Um, and maybe sometimes I think, well, maybe I should. Um, but <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I think you get a pretty good outcome as uh, the, way, the way you're uh, doing uh, it now. I so. suppose I'm, I suppose, because uh, it's really interesting because I remember having, during the TPF3, there was lots of discussion about, my questionnaire, almost like this is the podcast are talking to themselves, you know, saying, well, what my, here's my list of questions. And a lot of people really wanted to dig down into that into great d- detail. Mm-hmm. I have no more than three scribbled notes on a piece of paper. <laughs> and, and you might say, well, it's very lazy of you, but it, no, it, I don't it's show really, up it's not lazy it, of you. I think it's enlightened, but keep going. Three scribbled uh, notes, keep going. And, and usually they're to do with, I've done some research on, on, on the, the person I'm talking to and I've picked out two or three things. I think that could be really interesting to probe into that. Mm-hmm. And I'm a great believer in allowing the conversation to go where it needs to go. Yeah. As opposed, and I do f- think that some people, in their anxiety, massively over script, and they don't yes. al- just allow the. This they're so fearful. I think of a pause or of the guest thinking, 
this person's got no idea. You know, that, that they actually <laughs> I'm not don't get to thing. have the proper conversation. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there, there's about 238 things in there that you said that are really, really important. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm thinking, so one thought I want to just say out loud about preparation is, yeah, I'm totally down with you. I very rarely show up with anything prepared. I have a piece of paper in front of me today, but it's a checklist um, of like things to do and like the record the podcast. It's just one item here in the middle. And I find that if I bring notes, the ones that work well are like, kind of like reminders, like, Hey, if the conversation goes anywhere near Swiss cheese, that might be a very interesting thing. So it's more like, like way marks on the map. Like if you find yourself on the lower East side, here's a really good pretzel joint, you know, but if you're, if you're uptown on the West side, like to me, those are the kinds of notes that I find useful, little reminders of like places I might want to go. That's one thing I wanted to say out loud about when you said I only scribble three things. I'm like, yeah, but I bet you they're really good three things, <laughs> not random things. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, uh, you know, I get, I guess, with all these things, experience takes you down a certain path. I mean, if you listen to the podcasters who've been doing it for a very long time, you know, let's say someone like Tim Ferriss, it it it, it comes across in in the way he does stuff. Yeah, and doesn't it, that but, look effortless? Well, it does look effortless. <laughs> but however, you really do get an insight into their personality. So everything he does is always quite precise, quite measured thoughtful you know he interrogates mm. fine detail in the conversation so the personality comes out that way as opposed to a structure which is rigidly kept to yeah you you also mentioned in the that 238 things um <laughs> Another one, I don't think I'm kidding. And there might really be that many. Another one that was in there was you mentioned silence. Um, and yeah, mm. I totally agree. In the beginning, you know, I was afraid of silence. Everybody's afraid of silence because it's not, it's not something you commonly experience in the presence of other people. Uh, so I think that's a natural reaction to be afraid of it. But it also, uh, in like maybe the last year, I've developed this, what, what I think is an enlightened point of view about like, if two people are you know, talking like there's a conversation baton and we just hand it back and forth and there's continuous talking. I talk, you talk, I talk, you talk. Nobody's thinking. Like there has to be spots where I'm just going, huh, <laughs> yeah. that's a great point, Simon. Um, and I, I love that you mentioned silence because to me, there's different kinds of silence. There's the, I'm just going to sit here and stare at you until you tell me something juicy or the, whoa, I'm glad I can edit that pause out because uh, my you just like shifted the plate tectonics. So, um, oh, there's the awkward pause. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, I was, was, yeah, I was going to go there, but thanks for bringing in an awkward pause. Um, I I want to pull more on your uh, on the idea on the topic of what you've learned or what insights you have from doing those conversations with people, you know, in real life. Um, about maybe. Like how does silence work, you know, when you have multiple people in a room, because if I'm talking to person number three and they go silent, well, there's six other people, somebody else is going to talk. Like how do this, the dynamics work with multiple people and with silence and expectations of how conversation flows in small, like small, but still a group. Yeah, I mean, you know, you 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 definitely learn as you go along, as you would expect. But I, I think there's a couple of things that I think are really, really, really important. So if you have a group of people, eight, ten people, um, it's absolutely critical that you acknowledge every person in that room. You acknowledge them, playing, speaking about their name, asking them a question digging into something in the aspect of their life. Um, once you've acknowledged everybody and they feel acknowledged, then people come forward quite naturally. And sometimes you have to quieten people who are overly vocal and bring out people who are less vocal. But that first bit is really, really important. 
you don't want people in that group who've sort of zoned out because they're maybe they're a little bit introverted or they feel the other people know more than them mm. or what, whatever else it is. So I think that's a key thing. And the other thing I've found really, really important is to go up to the macro level. By that, I mean people do things for a reason. But it's very easy to dig away at the thing they're doing and actually not understand why they did it. So all you're getting is more and more about the thing they did, not about why they did it. So we, we've we always found in doing research that you need to ask the wider question about, well, what's going on in your life? You know, what's the things that may have some impact on that behavior, whatever that might be. Um, and I think you can bring that into podcasting because, you know, you, you get the best insight from understanding what the context is for someone's mm. life, what, yeah. what happened to them, the story, what's the context rather than just the thing itself. Um, so I suppose those are the two things I learned that I guess I'm applying or trying to anyway. <laughs> hmm. I was this, um, Somebody else, I don't like the name drop, somebody else, completely different context, is still in podcasting context, but a completely different person in a completely different context. We weren't talking about recording podcasts. We were talking about something else. Said, you know what the best question is to ask people, you know, just after they joined the community and is what was going on in your life that made you join? So when you say that question, I'm just like, whoa. I mean, I thought the question was really good when I heard it the first time and I've actually seen it work really well. And now you're also telling me clearly from a broad base of experience and knowledge, you're, you're saying the exact same words. Hmm. And my next thought was, whoa, what is it about those? What is it about that specific construct that makes or that is likely to make a person who hears that question, like actually find the answer to why, you know, it's like clearly saying, well, why'd you do that? That's clearly not sufficient to get at the real answer. So what, you know, and I also didn't ask what's your dog's name? Like, that's also not a question that's going to get it done, but what is it about what's going on in your life that, I don't know, does it make them you know, does it like break the mold, like shatter their expectations of how conversation was going to go? Or what is I it think there's two work? things, two things about that. The first is that the fact of you asking that kind of question goes back to what I said about yeah. recognizing the person. You are thinking about them, for the person, the individual, not just, oh, this is about a podcasting course. I'm so glad you've turned up and mm. signed up for it. You've you've immediately recognized they have a life beyond that. And so that's the first thing. I, I think the second thing is that actually a lot of people never answer those questions until somebody asks them. And actually you asking them often brings them insight they didn't necessarily have mm. so clarifies something yeah that's interesting i hadn't thought about that but that now you've you've now you've asked and so it's opened a door a door a different way of thinking you know a, a, a new perception so those are the two things i would say mm. That's brilliant. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that's brilliant because <laughs> I don't know if we were recording, but at some point we were talking about how your guests have often said, this feels like it's a therapy session. It's great. I don't have to pay for it. And I, I was tempted way back whenever that was to say, yeah, what is it about it that makes this a therapy session? And I think you just said it, which is, um, I'm going to say acknowledgement, the, you know, the, I see you, you know, to mm. the other person, I see you, yeah. um, and in a way, that's one role of certain kinds of therapists is to acknowledge, I see you and your emotions are legit. And like all these things that, um, I'm, I don't know much about therapy, so I don't want to make too many examples that are probably wrong. Uh, but that question of what's going on in your life, what's the context, I acknowledge you. That's, I think that's brilliant. Uh, I got nothing else to add to that. I'm, you know, that pause I was talking about for thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using it's a lot of that now. <laughs> it, it, here it is. Yeah. Um, cool. I, I, as much as I hate to say it, I think that's a terrific place to stop. 
um, yeah, Simon, it was a real pleasure. Oh, it's been a it's been a lovely conversation, brief but beautiful. <laughs>